YouTube, uh, this is Vargas, and I am back again with uh, another part of my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, DVD collection. This would be part three, and I am going to share with you the Nickelodeon version of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. After the Fox finished their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles run on the Fox box at that point, uh, for four kids, uh, the rights of the Turtles were bought out by Nickelodeon. And uh, they gave it a couple of years, and then they released uh, their own Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, the, two th the early 2000 one was um, 2D animation. With this one, they went for uh, 3D animation, and um, I like it. <laughs> At first, I was a little taken off, but because it was a, a very unique style of 3D animation, but it grew on me. Uh, it, it was a really dark, serious tone, but at the same time, they would have like goofy faces and everything. So it was a nice balance. And I really like this series because it integrates stuff from the comic book, from the OG cartoon series, even stuff from the early 2000s uh, series, and, and, you know, melts it into their own thing. So uh, I like it. And it had some really, really dark episodes. Like uh, in one episode, they're, they're in the farm because... Throughout the comic books, the series, the movies, and everything, uh, they always end up at a farm after the fight with the Shredder. The Shredder kicks their ass, and they go to retreat at the farm uh, that was owned by one uh, by April. Uh, and they heal, they train, and everything. And while at the farm, uh, they encounter this uh, Jason-like swamp thing, and, <laughs> and I thought it was really cool. And it has a lot of really cool body horror moments. And I'm like, oh, I can't believe they're getting away with this in a kids show. So there were some really, really cool dark episodes, and I was all into that. So after the OG series, um, this is my favorite one. It, it, this beats out the two, the early 2000 one. I still love the early 2000 one, but this one beats it out of the water because of how amazing it is. So uh, this is also notorious to collect because much like uh, the other series, uh, they really wanted to milk <laughs> the collectors. Uh, they would release these uh, these DVD volumes with a very short episode. So if you wanted the rest of them, you had to buy the other ones. And again, uh, it is painfully painful to try to find the episode order of these releases. It's not as notorious as the early 2001. Uh, it's not as bad as that. Uh, th these are released in order. But the order of the releases, I, I haven't been able to find a list. Uh, so... Um, I'm basing on the last time I checked, this is the, or the order of releases uh, that I saw. So that's how I'm uh, sharing it with you guys. So, yeah. The first one, Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This one has two, three, four, five, six episodes. So again, um, very, very limited episode release on these DVDs. Um, but yeah, the, the animation again is really cool. And I like the body horror element they were running with this. So, yeah, Rise of the Turtles. Then we have Enter the Shredder. This one has uh, also six episodes. Uh, these also have special features, which is a, a leg up on, on the 2006 releases. Um, has a little bit more, more special episodes. All of these are full screen. Again, these were released on TV, so they're all presented in their TV format. But, yeah, Enter the Shredder. Then I'm missing two episodes. And again, I wish that, I wish it it was numbered so I would have a better way to organize them. But uh, I'm looking at it. I, I'm missing two uh, DVD releases before this one. Enter uh, the Good, the Bad, and Casey Jones. This one also only has six. Uh, so uh, in that list that I mentioned, I know I'm missing two releases prior to this or after this. I can't remember. Then we have uh, this one, which this one has a little bit more episodes. Uh, this one's a little better. Comes with a slipcase and a lot more uh, special features. Uh, this is when they start uh, putting them out in widescreen. Um, so yeah, this is uh, Showdown in Dimension X slipcover, which I, uh, I always f love finding. A little bit more episodes. So people, they, they realized people were complaining about having to <laughs> buy these these uh, small count episodes, and they were like, ah, screw it, let's give them what they want. So they started releasing proper uh, DVD releases with a good amount of 
of episodes so as to not double make people double dip, which is annoying. Um, but yeah, this is this is really cool. I like this one, and again, I really like the episodes. That uh, they're they're a lot of fun. Then they have uh, Return to New York City. Uh, and this is when they introduced their version of Bebop and Rockstar. But because before this, uh, Shredder had two mutated minions that were, um, uh, what's, Dog Pound and Fish Face. And, uh, they were the equivalent to Bebop and Rocksteady. And, uh, eventually Dog Pound, uh, mut had a second mutation where he evolved into Rossar. And he looked like a bony wolf guy. Which I, I like the design of that. I like that he looked really cool, but that wasn't really Rossar in it, uh, you know, from the uh, the second uh, Turtles cartoon. Uh, but eventually, they did introduce Bebop and Rocksteady. Um, they made Rocksteady into a Russian kind of guy, and Bebop into this skinny, like uh, like uh, hipster kind of guy. Uh, he looked he looked weird, like that skinny. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, this is. This is, I don't know what volume this is, but this one also only has a couple of episodes. Then they released Revenge. Uh, this one has a little bit more episodes again. Uh, no slipcase. I'm pretty sure this one came with a slipcase. But uh, this is when uh, the Shredder teams up with the Krang. Uh, Krang in the old, the old school cartoon was this warlord from Dimension X that took got his body taken away, so he's only a brain. Then uh, in the two, early 2001, they introduced the Utrons, which was probably based on the comic book. And the Utrons were a race of brains that would talk. And then in this one, it was the Krang, the whole species that was originally called the Utrons, uh, was called the Krang, and they would uh, invade. And they had um, Guilford Godfrey, the, the voice of a Krang, if I remember right. And Roseanne, <laughs> Roseanne Barr did the voice of the Krang, the Krang Queen, which I thought was really cool. And they had a lot of really cool voice actors and uh, people doing the voices for for some characters. Uh, this one introduces Muckman, uh, the Mighty Mutanimals, Mondo Gecko, and uh, something I forgot to mention in all three of these is that they also introduce uh, Usagi Ojimbo, which is a character... Uh, created by Stan Sakai. I hope I'm not butchering his name, but Stan Sakai, who was this uh, Ronin samurai rabbit, which I really love the character of uh, Usagi Ojimbo, and he would always cross over with the turtles in uh, in all three versions of, uh, of of their cartoons. And this is Revenge, then Retreat, which actually I think I have these out of order. I think it's Retreat, then Revenge, or then Return to New York. I don't know. Now I really have to double check because I think my, my DVDs are out of order. Um, this is when they, the, they get their ass kicked by the Shredder and I think the Krangs. And uh, they go to April's farm and that's where, where they encounter the uh, the Jason monster and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and Bigfoot, I think they also encounter Bigfoot. And uh, that's where they get their, uh, their new training, new powers. And they go back to New York to stop the Krang and the Shredder. So yeah, I'm pretty sure... Um, these are out of order. I think it, it goes re Revenge, Retreat, and then Return. So yeah, after they defeat uh, the Krang, uh, the planet is destroyed and the turtles are saved by the Fugitoid. So it follows the, the same kind of storyline from the two, early 2000 cartoon series. And they, were, they went to space in Beyond the Known Universe. So the Fugitoid brings the turtles, which, if I remember correctly, it was voiced by David Tennant, the 10th Doctor Who. Uh, and this is a, a, a very, very cool release, a two-disc set, which uh, has more episodes. And this is where they were fighting the Triceratons. Uh, they were trying to uh, stop them from releasing a Doomsday device, which is, I think, what destroyed the Earth. But, uh, yeah, this one's cool. Then uh, the Earth's Last Stand. This is another uh, low count uh, DVD, uh, but they started releasing them in widescreen, so that was pretty cool. And uh, this is when they 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 form the the generator and they stop uh, the uh, the Triceratons. Then uh, for the last season, they started calling it uh, Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. 
Um, this is when I got uh, the Super Shredder. The Shredder was defeated, and he was really badly damaged. And uh, as a last-ditch effort, he commands Baxter Stockman, who at this point was a fly, uh, to inject him with mutagen, and he becomes uh, the Super Shredder. This messed-up-looking abomination that uh, gave the Turtles a run for their money. And uh, they actually did something here that I didn't think would happen, is they actually killed off Splinter. Uh, they, they kill him off, and that's the last battle, they, they stop the Shredder by, uh, by killing him. So, the, again, this series was really cool, it went really dark, and I love it for it. I, I love how, how utterly dark this series got, and, uh, I think it's, 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 it's all sorts of cool. Uh, I really, really love this series. And then, they went all out with the last release of Tales of the Ninja Turtles, uh, the final chapters, and this is this is a really crazy cool one that I would recommend you get. Uh, in this one, they fight monsters, they fight Dracula, uh, and uh, the turtles are Raphael is turned into a vampire, and then April and Casey, and uh, you know then Donatello, and they have to fight these uh, these monsters. The Frankenstein monster helps them out, so it's a really cool uh, series of episodes. Then uh, they have that crossover with Usagi Yojimbo. Where they're transported, transported to his universe for a crossover, and then they have the last one, which is um, where they go to the future. The, not the turtles, but you you get a look at the future of the turtles as they go. Uh, Mad Max and uh, uh, Raf has amnesia and he doesn't remember a lot of stuff. Donatello's body gets damaged, so he downloads himself into a metalhead robot. So Donnie's a robot. Uh, Mikey becomes enlightened, and Leo becomes a uh, Lord Humongous type of character, uh, who also had amnesia. So, um, so yeah, this this is a really dark ending for the cartoon, and uh, I love it. I love this this series. Again, the the OG one uh, I like because of nostalgic reasons, but uh, at the, again, at the end of the series, it kind of kind of floundered a bit, in my opinion. Uh, this one, this one, I really really like. Uh, I definitely like it. I, I still love the the t early two thousand one. Like I keep mentioning, but this one beats it out of the water. Yeah, it consistently has a lot of really cool episodes. Uh, the animation is pretty cool. Uh, again, at first I was a little taken aback by it, but it grew on me really fast, and I really love how dark it is, how weird it got, and uh, you know all the stuff that happened and how they integrated. Because even this one also has a crossover between. The OG Turtles, uh, uh, they cross over, and they got the original ca voice cast. So that's a leg up on uh, on Turtles Forever. They got the original voice cast uh, to come back. They're actually the voice actor that does Raphael also does uh, in this one. The voice actor that does Michael uh, Donatello, I'm sorry, uh, is the same voice actor that did uh, Raphael in the old one. So uh, there's this moment when Raphael from the OG cartoon encounters Donatello. And they sound alike, <laughs> and they're like, "Hey, he sounds like me. Hey, he doesn't sound anything like me." So I thought that was that was pretty cool. So I highly recommend the Nickelodeon one. This is this is really really cool turtles cartoon, and I really dig it a lot. So that was the. I don't have Rise of the Ninja Turtles, unfortunately. Uh, I haven't been able to find any DVD releases of that. Uh, again, the art style in that one I don't like that much, and a lot of the stories I don't care for. But when they get into the Foot Clan thing, that's when it gets good, and that's when I, I enjoy it the best. So yeah, uh, I can't showcase that one. That one I'm still trying to hunt for down for. So the last thing I'm going to talk about in this video series will be uh, the movies, all the movies that I have of the Turtles, and uh, the live action one, which I consider like a a follow-up to the live-action Turtles cartoon, so stay tuned for that. But until I see you all again, please take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.